Hi everybody. Um, I want to talk about a press release we issued uh, last month uh, about the, our exploration target for the, uh, the Placer channel. On our property is, uh, is the largest historical Placer gold deposit in eastern North America. Pretty much outside the west, it was the only place that was Placer mining on the eastern side of North America. It was in the boats. So, uh, you know, this Placer property, as some of you heard me before, you know, there's a long history. In the 1800s, it was, it was mined for like 50 years, the Placer deposit. And, um, and then it stopped. And then as recently in the 1960s, um, there was a big operation, uh, the Bose Placer Company in the 1960s. In the, in the late 50s, they drilled the property to, to get a resource. They came up with a resource of about 110,000 ounces. And then, you know, they brought in this, uh, the, the, the giant uh, Ubra dredge to dredge uh, the property, which we can see right here. Um, that ended in the 60s, and then, um, and then uh, in the 80s, there was uh, some exploration drilling to measure this placer deposit. Uh, that was then in the 80s. Um, but what was missing from all this data, what they were missing and what we were able to gain, four years ago we announced that, 2021, uh, we, we found the drill locks. So when they drilled the property in the 1960s, uh, obviously, you know, there was a lot of drill data. It was with that conclusion that they, that they, uh, that they had a, a resource. We have to add the word historical resource to it, which, you know, made them worthwhile to invest the money to bring in a dredge and start mining. Problem was, in the archives, those drill holes were nowhere to be found. We just had basically a total and then drilling results by large sections of the channel. Uh, so, uh, this is something we announced in 2021, and it was this, it was, it was great. So, you know, we were able to get, you know, the missing, uh, missing drill logs. Um, but our focus the last couple of years, of course, has been, you know, we want to explore where the source, where the placer gold came from. So that's what we're focused on. And with great success, you know, as we announced, we discovered, you know, the Saddle Reef, and we are able to link the discovery of the Saddle Reef hard rock structure to the placer gold deposit, which is great. But, um, but it was only recently that we took the time to really analyze this old drill data, combined with the drilling that was done in the 1980s by Université de Laval, uh, Coney Agus Mines, Macamic, to name them. Um, and yeah, so putting all this together, we came up that, uh, what, that the, um, the potential of the placer deposit, which is what an expression target is, it's a potential, is much bigger than what we believe. So, uh, so we came up with, what, 3.86 million cubic meters at uh, 0.81 grams per cubic meter up to 4.9 grams per cubic meter with the nugget effect. Now, why this big range? It's the nugget effect. In other words, uh, this property is uh, very famously known to have, you know, created like, you know, 50 ounce nuggets. And, um, and it's something we saw in the production because the... Uh, um, the, the, the small part that was produced by the Yuba dredge, its production, uh, some parts that they did some production was six times more than what was drilled. And it's something which the, even the, the, you know, the geologists back then would say is that, you know, uh, what you'll, be, you'll be producing more than what you drill because of the nugget effect. And it's, and it's also something similar if you look at the, like an old... Uh, 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 the old archives from uh, the, uh, you know, the 1800s, them too, you know, like, uh, you know, they were coming up like with like seven grams per cubic meter. Um, why cubic meters also, yeah, placer, placer deposits has to be measured in cubic meters. That's how it is. Instead of grams per tons, it's per cubic meter. So yeah, so along with this, uh, you know, along with this, this great data that we have here, we also like, uh, you know, here. here, let's take one out. Look at this radio map. Look at this. Look at that. You know what's amazing? Look at this, everybody. You know what's amazing? None of this has never been published before. So we had a lot of great data to work with. And what's nice is that it's not, it's not, just, the, not just the drill holes, 
you know, of course, you know, what contains gold and not gold. But all this drilling is that they, the drill they did, they did fencing across the placer channel. So the drill that also gave us, uh, we're able to do like a great, an, an outline of the placer channel, which wasn't well defined before. I mean, they attempted geophysics in the 80s, um, but without great success. They did some drilling, but nowhere near the hundreds of holes that we have that was done in, 19, uh, in the late 50s. So this data, we're able to take this data of all the drill holes. Um, what this gave us, it gave us what? The con basically the, the, the you know, side view contours of the channel. It also gave us uh, some data to what, what type of rock they were drilling into. So not just the placer channel, but uh, what type of rock they're hitting, or the saprolite, as we know today. There's that. And, uh, and also, of course, it gave us a whole new evaluation of, of the gold. You know, I mean, it's, it's great. So if you add this to the holes that were done in the 1980s, um, this is how we were able to update um, the exploration target. Also, after this, what really helped us a lot is that in the last couple of years, the Quebec uh, government did a whole LIDAR reading of the whole area. So we were able to overlay all this data. So these old maps overlaid with the drilling and the data that, that was done by the previous companies, such as Eurogold in, the, in, the two th in 2011. Um, and the data we were able to get, and there you go. We were able to make uh, new maps. Um, and with that, we were able to do a, it's called a poly, uh, polygon, uh, poly uh, targets by, by polygon cells. And uh, with that, also what we discovered is that um, instead of the channel being very linear, which we, you know, that, that's how it was viewed in the past as something, you know, place a channel, something really linear following the valley, the river valley of uh, the Dijibai River Valley of the placer channel, which is buried deep within the valley. Well, we found out is that, you know, you can't just view it as something very linear. It's, there's a nuance to this. What we found out is that where there was the highest grades, the highest historical grades of placer was at the end of each tributary that entered the valley. So each tributary or ancient tributary or current tributary, like the Giro River is one tributary. And then there's some tributaries which maybe just, maybe just during spring you could sort of identify it. But they were there even pre-glacial. Um, those are what transported the gold into the valley. So it all came from north. So all those tributaries come from the north down to the river valley. At the end of those tributaries form deltas. And this is where you have the highest grade golds. Um, it's also where, um, so those are in pockets. So you, yes, of course, there was transport going linear, you know, going towards west. But what we could see is that, yeah, delta, where it forms some deltas, there's concentrations of placer there. So our, our exploration target at 3.86 million cubic meters at 0.81 grams per cubic meter to 4.9 grams per cubic meter, uh, counting in the negative effect. How do we come to that? Well, um, many things. What we found out is that the drilling that was done in the 1980s uh, by Univall Univ Univ University, Mac and Mick, Coney Agus Mines, um, what they were working on they did not have the data of the drilling that was done in the late 50s for the placer gold operations. So they were going blind on that, which is, which is interesting. So in other words, they weren't, there was no pre prejudice on what they were doing. However, what we did notice is that um, what, they didn't do what they did wrong was that the, in their drilling, the last hole in the fence line, in the fence drill holes they were doing, the last hole or the first hole, depending on which direction you're looking at, um, so the last hole was the, often the hole that had the highest grade. Normally what you should do is that you should keep drilling to close off the zone. In other words, you know, if you have a high grade, well, you want to keep drilling to see if the grade continues. And then you stop drilling when the grade stops. So then you have an idea of what's really the width of your placer channel, of at least, or at least the mineralized zones. Uh, they didn't do that. Now, of course, uh, it's probably sometimes lack of funds. And what it is is that, you know, they, uh, they and um, that happens even today is that you, know, you do a drill program, you stop, you know, everything stops, everybody's gone, and then you analyze everything, things in the lab, and then you find out what your grades were. And often there was a lack of a budget or whatever circumstance where you know, the company at the time did not go back and you know, do a second phase drilling to confirm or correct or, or to analyze um, you know, results. So there's that. So they didn't do that. So we know that some zones were open. 
That's why when we say is that, you know, the placer channel, it's open uh, laterally because of that. Now depth. Another thing that was undervalued is that some of the highest grades, it's when they were drilling, when they reach. So the placer channel is basically more or less about two meters of earth for still sitting top of bedrock. So that's the, all the drill programs, including in the 1950s, you know, they just wanted to measure that auriferous till. So they would keep drilling. Then when they hit bedrock, they would stop. However, one company did something different in 19, uh, 1987. Mac and Mig did a couple holes. Mac and Mig decided to drill a bit deeper into the saprolite rock. And um, that's where they were getting some of the highest grades. And we know for a fact is that so when we did drilling, when we did, um, when we did uh, uh, diamond drilling, underneath the place of deposit to see if, uh, if that was a source. Um, what we found is that the saprolite layer was much thicker than what was previously estimated. So, you know, so it, that could be like two to eight meters thick. So again, uh, it's also, it was open at depth, at least into the saprolite layer. So we took that into account in, uh, in, in the measurement of the place of deposit. Now, what made this also, yeah, um, again, we had the advantage of uh, we, we were able to, a collector had, what was mined in the late 50s, basically, was never deposited in the government archives. Uh, the, the government, the natural, uh, Ministry of Natural Resources, usually all work you've done is all deposited there. The work we do ends up being deposited there. And it was always so for like, basically, uh, you know, for almost, uh, <laughs> all data for almost 100 years is all deposited there. But for whatever reason, um, the drill logs and the drill data um, wasn't found or not deposited. So this was pretty much lost to history, but we we're fortunate in what we announced in 2021, um, there was a collector which had all this data here, you know, with the, the nice maps that I just showed and um, all the drill logs, it's all there. So this was great. So this allowed us to what, I had another layer of data which was missing for the, um, for the whole placer channel is that um, they did like over 300 holes and even the holes that had no gold, is a, it was a great data point. So since they did fencing, we were able to have a nice profile of the channel. So if you had this profile of the channel, add in new LIDAR, the satellite, uh, uh, satellite uh, LIDAR imaging that was done, we were able to get more complete contours of what the valley is like. So we were able to get a better idea of what the placer channel is like also. Which, which has been unprecedented before. So all that together, so if you look at the, so if we're able to get all the data from, you know, the rock they were drilling, the type of rock, where they're hitting, you know, saprolite rock once they pass the reference till, where they're hitting just, you know, just basic or just black shell. So all that data together, we're able to get, um, really help basically in calculating our expectation target. And also, of course, um, the added data that there was of uh, the holes that did get, that had gold in, the, that had placer gold. Now, all these holes, again, you know, there's a difference. Let me just say, when I say, these were all called overburden drilling. So they were all basically vertical holes just drilled straight down into the placer channel. That's how you do placer exploration. You, you do overburden drilling. There's different types. You know, your gold that's sonic drilling. Uh, in the past, they were doing uh, you know reverse circulation drilling, but basically that's what it's vertical holes to get this uh, to get this data, uh, as opposed to what we're doing you know diamond drilling, which is when, that's when you drill into hard rock. And that. So all that we're able to come up with an exploration target, which is considerable. Now, why is this exploration target not a gold reserve? I, why am I why am I not saying how many ounces? Well. Uh, <laughs> Uh, shareholders in the audience are free to do the math, you know, so 3.86 cubic meters at 81 grams to or 4.8 grams, the math can be done, but we cannot state it because um, not enough work was done to, uh, to declare a 43101 uh, resource category. Uh, why? Even though, yes, it's a lot of data, the thing is that uh, a lot of the data we were working with is dates pre-2000, uh, pre-2001. So the rules changed 2001. In other words, uh, data that was done, drilling or geological work that was done, you know, up, you know, up 2001 up to now can be used, 431 calculations. Anything before that is historical, cannot be used. However, it's very indicative and it helped us to reach this exploration target. So, uh, so there we go. So, you know, if, um, if you calculate it, this is, a, it's considerable. 
It's unique. This is the only, uh, it's, it's the only placer district in Eastern North America, and it's all on our property. And uh, what's nice about it is that, yes, we have all the mineral rights, mineral claims in the area, uh, but um, uh, a good portion of the calculated exhibition target is also on real estate that we owned, uh, which is nice. Um, also, what we discovered is that uh, uh, the placer channel uh, has always been viewed as something very, a very linear channel, you know, going more, you know, northeast to southwest. Um, but there's nuance to that, is that what we found out is that where the, where's the pockets of highest grades, they're all at the end of tr ancient tributaries that came into the valley. So there you go. So now instead of focusing as a whole channel, we can now focus on pockets along the channel um, of where, you know, uh, the tributaries form deltas, ancient deltas. And that's where you have the higher concentration of, uh, of the placers. So, um, so it's, it's, it's very, um, uh, it's very, it's very promising. Uh, more work would have to be done for it to bring this up to a resource category. So a lot, a lot of work to do, but uh, it's very exciting.